desire to give but could not give. We ask you to increase our finances. Show your favor of our finances. God, let this offering be used for the purpose that it was taken up for, and that is for the building of your kingdom. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Let's give God a praise this morning. Thank you. Thank you.
Jackson family. Pastor Rudolph Daniels and First Lady Daniels.
Amen. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. Look at your name and say, God is with us. Lower 
than you already been. And it seems like you're getting lower. The Midianites left the Israelites in a low state naturally and spiritually. The Israelites were so oppressed by the Midianites that they cried to God for help. When that situation starts to get the best of you, you need to cry to God for help. He can deliver you out of your Midianite situation. After seven long years of doing things the way they wanted to do them, the Israelites finally came to their, their senses. They realized they served a mighty God. But why did they wait so long to turn to God for help? Many times we have to suffer before we are willing to turn back to God with a prayer for help. Like many of us, like many of us, the Israelites waited it until they had no other option and they couldn't take it any longer. How many times, how many times do we have hard circumstances come our way and we never stop to ask God what is his plan for us in this circumstance. We just keep trying to handle things on our own without reaching out to God for guidance and help. You need to put your hand in God's hand and let them lead the way in your life. Can I preach today? Yeah. Stop trying to figure it out on your own. Give it to the list, right? Give it to God. Yeah. Tell somebody, I'm coming out of this Midianite situation. Look, look at all those years the Israelites wasted living in fear and being bullied by the Midianites. Uh, don't be defeated by life's trouble. I'm out of that midnight situation and get your life back. Your husband is waiting on you. Your wife is waiting for you. Your job is waiting for you. Your house is waiting for you. Your joy, your peace is waiting for you. You got to come out. Don't live in a pity party, but take back all the enemy stole from you because God has everything you need and he's waiting to give it to you. How long will you continue to stay in that dead situation that sucking the life out of you? You've been in a low, weakened state for so long. You don't want to go nowhere. You don't want to do nothing. You're living in fear and constant worry. Get your life back. Look at your next Get your life back. Yes. Come to tell you this morning, Macedonia, you've been in this place long enough, and it's time for you to call on the Lord for help. Amen. Yeah, why don't you look to the hill from we're coming to your help? Because all your help come from, come from the Lord. Come out, come out, come out of that many a night situation that's holding you in bondage. Take control of your situation today. Tell you that it's time for you to come to your sins. Oh, that nigga went to sleep. Look at your neighbor. Say it's time for you to come to your senses. Well, the Israelites put up with their dead situation for long enough. They had finally decided to call out to God for help. They had access to God who could defeat their enemies. I want to tell you a secret today that there's nothing too hard for our God. He is strong and mighty in that. Can I preach today? God is like that big brother you can call when you need help. When I was in high school, you know I would mess with a lot of people. And I knew that I could call on my big brother because he was tall in stature and he would look out for me even when he knew and had y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. Yeah, it says, do you think that 
I would not tell my big brother I needed his help. And sometimes I had to tell my big sister, y'all ain't talk to me. God is like your big brother. You may have practice. You got to have some nerve to call on the for help. And watch him come to your rescue. When you call his name. How many of you know that God will fight the battles and defend your adversary? God is a good God. He's a God of justice. If God is for you, who can be against you? You're more than a conqueror. I was at some Sunday school call. Through Jesus Christ. Do you believe that you have the victory today? After the Israelites called out to God for help, God sends a prophet to them to remind them of all God had done. And every now and then we have to be reminded of how good God has been to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. You may be going through this right now, but remember how God has brought you out from so many other things. Yeah, he healed your sickness. He, he provided what you needed. He helped you raise your kids. He, he increased your finances. He, he strengthened your marriage. He turned things around for you. Some things he did for you didn't turn out the way you thought they should, but God knows what's best for you. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He'll keep bringing you out even when you don't really deserve it. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. And I'm so glad God is a forgiving God. He gives us a second chance. He's a God of a second chance. He won't throw you away. But he is the potter who remodels the clay. I am so glad that he didn't throw me away, but he shaped me into what he wanted me to be. Can I tell you that he's still molding me? And y'all ain't gonna talk to me. He's still the potter, and I am the clay. Anybody still being molded by God today? Yeah, it says you remember when you were on 95 and somebody would cut you off, you would say some things. Now you just turn the radio up loud and start singing your gospel. Y'all don't know. He's still molding us. And so God reminds the Israelites of how he brought them out of Egypt, out of bondage, and out of the hands of all who oppressed them and gave them their land. Verse 10, God tells them, also I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Amen. But you have not obeyed my voice. Yes, God told them to have no other gods before them, but they yes. still decided to serve other gods. Yes. God had to remind them of why they were in the situation they were facing in the first place. Yes. They were not faithful to God. But we're serving other gods. A god is anything you put before God. It could be a job. It could be TV, your kids, your husband, your wife, your friends, your money, your social media, or whatever it is taking you away from God. Don't get so distracted by things that are going around and going on in your life and miss God. You can't find peace because you are constantly worrying. He that keeps his mind on God will be kept in perfect peace. Yeah, I, I'm concerned about, I'm concerned, I was concerned about the coronavirus, but I won't let it consume me. And I know most of y'all won't, but some of y'all ain't wore masks in two or three weeks. But we gotta trust God. Trust God. Sister Cooper said the other day, if they come out with a pill uh, boost, I'm going to give it to you. Evaluate yourself.
to see if anything is dominating all of your time so much so that you don't even take time out to acknowledge God. I want to tell you that the enemy is trying to distract us from God and have us off course just like the Israelites. God allowed, he allowed the Israelites to experience hardships in order to get their attention. That's right. That's right. God shook things up by rousing up the enemy to come against the Israelites. To show them how hard life can be without them. Do you know that God will throw a little trouble into your life to get your attention? The bills are paid, you're feeling good, the kids are doing well, they're behaving, your business is doing good, your job is doing well, you got the money in the bank, things could be better. It is when things are going well for you that we start slacking and not seeming to need God like we used to. We had more of a prayer life when we had hardships. We we had more of a prayer life when we didn't know if our lives would be on when we came home. We had more of a prayer life when we had to eat a cup of noodles for dinner. Y'all gonna talk to me? Oh Lord, help me make it to work. This gas tank is empty. Oh Lord, let this food stretch to next week. Oh Lord, let me get this promotion. Y'all gonna talk to me? take it from him if they knew. Can I preach? While he's hiding, God sends an angel to Gideon. Verse 12 says, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon didn't seem to feel like a mighty warrior. He wasn't a person with great faith. In fact, Gideon responds to God, asking him why he allowed all of this to happen to the Israelites. He doesn't understand why the Israelites went through what they went through. Gideon doesn't feel protected by God's presence, and he feels abandoned by God. He doesn't seem to trust God, and at this point, because he doesn't trust God of everything, he because of what he's experienced. Verse 14 says, Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Yes, yes. Have I not sent you? God saw something in Gideon that Gideon didn't see in himself. And it was his strength. God was about to make something out of Gideon and it was time for Gideon to see it too. 
Do you really know who you are? Sometimes we think that God only uses special people. But God will use you because you are his child. God knows who you are when you don't even know who you are. He'll help you see yourself, your true identity, and he'll help you to reach your full potential in him. I want to tell you something that God has a bigger plan for you and he will use what you are going through to fulfill his perfect plan. Tell somebody, stop hiding. God will deliver you. Look at him say, stop hiding. First Peter 4 chapter, and I'm getting out of here. Y'all start to doze off on me. 4 chapter 12 verse says, Beloved, do not think it. Strange concerning the fire of trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that your partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. We don't understand why we go through what we go through, but we know that it is all a part of God's plan. He's working everything out for our good. And time and time and time and time again, the Israelites turn back on their backs on God, but God has still, still had mercy on them. Amen. We all make mistakes. Look at your name and say, We all make mistakes. Or look at that other name and say, We all make mistakes. And God is ready to forgive us. Sometimes you may go through some things you could have avoided in the first place, but God is a loving God who can turn things around for your good. God loved the Israelites despite their shortcomings and although they paid for their disobedience, he still worked things out for their good. Isn't he a good God? God is not concerned with your past. He wants to use you. Even though God called Gideon for a great task, Gideon didn't think he could be used by God. He tells God in verse 15, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my friend is the weakest in the past. And I am the least in my father's house. Gideon had so many excuses like many of us in here today uh, have excuses because of our own insecurities. We measure ourselves by others. But we should measure ourselves by what God has called us to do. God was not concerned with how we get his crew was or his status in his father's house. God had a plan that he needed Gideon to fulfill his plan. God is not looking at how we look in the present. But he sees us in the future. We may not think we are capable, but God knows us better than we know ourselves. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. I'm looking at your future right now, and it's looking real good. God is going to elevate you, and He's going to use you. How many y'all believe that? Come out of your eyes. God needs your talents and he needs your, your gifts. He has a work for you to do in his kingdom. It doesn't matter about your past, who you are, or where you come from. But you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Look at your neighbor. And tell your neighbor, come out of hiding. Because God has need of you to advance his kingdom. My brothers and sisters, God told Gideon, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. And sometimes, sometimes you feel like you can't face your giant. But take God with you. And he will 
give you the victory. When God is with you, you don't have to fear. Don't live in fear, but live by faith. Tell your neighbor today that God will be with you. If you believe that God is with you, you ought to give God some praise.
for some of the things you're going through. Some of it is because of your disobedience. And your refusal to make God first in your life. And as soon as you start to take the time to acknowledge God and be in His presence, you start to see a shift in your circumstance. You'll start to see God drive out the million nights in your life. Those million night situations are just there for God to give your attention. But I speak today that you're coming out of box. Whatever situation you may be facing, you need to know that God will be with you. Don't, don't worry about your past, but move forward into your future. God has a vision for your life. And he's going to be there with you to bring it to pass. He has a plan for your life. But let God be with you today. Make him first in your life. If you haven't already accepted Christ as your Savior, your personal Savior, today is a good day to give your life to Christ. All over the building as we stand. He's waiting on you. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. We're living in Paris and uncertain times. And you need to be saved. For God so loved the world that he, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you shall confess with your mind the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in your heart. That God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. The Bible says that there is one way to heaven. And that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the power but by me. Look at me. You can come today. Come. Come to Jesus. Why are you have time? Come on.
God, we thank you. We thank you today for all that you've done for us. God, we, we ask now that you cover us and keep us perfectly. God, there are children that are petitioning God for your anointing to fall on their mind. God, as they go through this, what seems to be weird season of learning experience, God, we ask that you would keep their minds and keep their hearts focused on the task that is at hand. God, cover our kids. We know the devil is seeking whom he may be found. But we speak, God, we speak life. God, we speak now that no hurt or harm and danger shall come upon us. God, we ask that as they go to and fro from school, God, as they travel on the bus, and they may walk or ride their bicycles, God, that you cover them, that you guide and protect them. God, we thank you for the parents, God. God, we know that there is no instructions on how to be great parents, but we ask you now for your guidance on how to direct our kids in the manner that they should go. God, we know that with you we can do all things but fail. So we ask you for your presence to rest in our lives, rest, rule, and abide within us. God, give us the instructions. Give us the knowledge that will make parenting easy. God, cover us. God, cover these teachers that are representing these, these, these uh, non-instructional workers that are representing. God, that will deal with our kids on a day-to-day -day basis. God, if they're not saved, God, we ask that you save their soul. God, give them understanding on how they should treat our kids. And God, we thank you. God, we thank you. And God, we, we thank you for speaking into us that, God, as our kids are represented at the altar, that we know that there are doctors and lawyers and, and presidents and teachers and professors and professional ball players right here in our midst. So, God, we ask you to give them the designs of their heart. God, show your favor over their life. So that ultimately, God, you can be glorified with the life that they are living. We thank you. God, if there's any sick that are among us today, we ask you for a healing power. God, heal, deliver right now. God, who never made me sick, we ask you to touch them on the ground of their head to the soul of their feet. We thank you now, God. We thank you for your favor over our lives. Now, we, if we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to say thank you. We say thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. God bless this church. Bless the membership of this church. God, let people be saved and set free and delivered. God, in this church. God, we thank you. Bless the leadership of this church. God, give us the understanding, the wisdom, and the way that you have us to go. That some sinner man, some sinner boy, some sinner girl can be saved. And God, we thank you. And God, we ask you now to increase our finances, God. So that ultimately we can give it back to you. And you can continue to bless us. God, touch us right now. God, give us strength and courage to declare to a dying world that you are still alive, that you're still strong and mighty, that you're still the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're still the great I am. We say thank you. We proclaim it today, God. We claim victory today that we're coming out of our midnight situation. We thank you, God, for giving us faith and strength and power to speak life to a dead situation. So we speak life. We speak life. We 
we thank you. We praise you. The mighty name of Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen.
someone will be delivered and set free. So we pray, God, Jesus. in the mighty name of Jesus.
On that night, you took the bread. No meal, no meal, no meal. On that night, you took the bread. You broke it. This is my body. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Let us all eat together. Likewise, he poured the wine. Say, this is my blood. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He took it forward and says, often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Let us all drink together.